Welcome back to the second half. I've had a request on Discord to stop playing dumb background music and to start playing some elite drummer boy tracks to give a second win to the players I before they die. To sit out before we die. <laughs> Let me see here. Here we go. You could play the new dungeon one if you wanted. I'll have to look that up for next yeah. time. Finley, now that the battle music has come on in order to bolster your spirit, kind of take you as if you were some sort of old chipped mug and film you with some warm soup. Now that you're filmed with the warm soup of music, what do you want to do to not die? Uh, so much like, uh, uh, the evil count with uh, six fingers on his hand and the princess bride, I'll stand there bravely with my rapier and then turn around and run out the hole. <laughs> right. This is this is the way out. Out I go. Mr. Finley bravely ran away. Uh, are you disengaging? Yeah. All right. You disengage the hell out of that hole. Uh, Egrim, you are going to get a attack as the one that is to the north of you turns and follows Finley outside. What? Nice. He can't get out that hole. I mean, if Kelly can get in the hole. I mean, he did say that these guys, the roof, the roof in here is smaller, so if Kelly could get in, then these guys could. All right, uh, attack. Nope. Nope. All right, Finley. Uh, you run your maximum distance outside. Uh, as you're hustling out, you know, a little trickle of blood, a cut on your face, one of the people out harv or, uh, planting wheat nearby, like, calls from a few dozen feet away. He's like, hey, how's it going over there? And then he sees this piece of armor come trudging out, Terminator running. And, and now that it's out of the hole, it's, like, extending to become taller and wider. Uh, <laughs> and the guy's just like, ah, 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 and he, he points over your shoulder. <laughs> Yeah, no shit. <laughs> uh, uh, 14, I think, is going to miss both times. Yeah. Yes. Or him. Uh, no. My yeah. AC is 14. Wow. All right. Yeah. So long, sweet prince. Yeah. Uh, seven points of damage. And then four points of damage. Oh, yeah, yeah. Lights out. <laughs> All right, yeah, with the second hit, you go, you do like a smash fall move. You, for some reason, launch yourself into the air and dramatically throw your arm back and go, ah! <laughs> so you, you thought to the ground and you bounce one time. <clears throat> you briefly let go of your rapier and it's just out of finger's reach as you lay unconscious on the ground and the armor moves stained over you. In your unconscious state, you're like briefly going in and out of it. It's like the beginning of a battlefield game where you get taken out in the cutscene <laughs> and you're like, oh, what's happening? Uh, you see like a lamb come over and lick your face and then all of a sudden the lamb just gets kicked away. And you're like, no, lamby. No, nah, nah. his only crime was that he was adorable. <laughs> uh, oh my God. For fuck's sake, dude. <laughs> There's been a lot of Chris and uh, Brian. All right. Brian had two, oh. you had three, so. The, the two guys next to you are like reaching out constantly to grab you. And then uh, you think you're safe, right? They're all just bumbling around. And then the one that's still in his alcove grabs you by the head and just starts squeezing. And you can feel. Do you even have head armor? Uh. Yeah, I mean, I have full leather on. Yeah, yeah, you can you can feel the leather squeezing onto your head. Oh, it's it's painful. It's painful. It's uh, eleven points of damage, kind of painful. Holy jeebus! Yeah, it's a drop in the pool for Agrim, right? I mean, it was. See, I'm at. Did that knock you down? Well, what was the nine damage too? Uh, no, no, that nine was the second attack. Oh, okay. Because there's two people attacking. Yeah. Then, no, I'm still up. You only took 11 points of damage total. Okay, then I'm, yeah, I'm still up. All right. <clears throat> the Congo line goes to chase Kelly. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, 21, which I think will beat your AC. Yeah. Yeah. Three points of damage, but I need you to make that concentration concentration save using a... The, con the conversation that we make every time you hit me? Well, you know, I'm just trying to remind everybody because I don't want to be like, yeah, you forgot your X and Y. No, you... No, it's, it's good. Look, if I was like, haha, you forgot to roll damage dice for your... Uh, for for your hunter's mark. Now you can't roll them because it's somebody else's turn. I'd seem like a real dick, wouldn't I? It's okay to just remind people of things, Dave. I was actually making fun of the fact that you couldn't say... Uh, uh, it sounded like you were saying conversation instead of... Uh, I did, I did. Concert. But that's only because I messed up. Daka! Make your, make your, cons make your conservation save! Uh, unfortunately, you failed, and now three quarters of your country is covered in oil pipelines. No, it's <laughs> Um, okay, just clarify something that we were talking about on the break with my armor situation. Yep. I thought, I thought it was like it's fifteen. We thought it was sixteen, but it's actually it's still fifteen because it's just a chain shirt. Okay. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. All right. Because chain mail is heavy armor and I can't wear that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, just putting that out of the way. Um, are we enacting a plan? Get more information? <laughs> plan. At this point, yes, because yeah. there's no way we can get to Finley and save him. He's going to get cooted ground, so. Yeah. Chase it! Uh, do you want me to slap a heel on you or do you want me to dash? Because I could dash and probably get more. Yeah, just dash, man. Yeah. Might as well dash, see what we can see. All right, there's a stairwell at the back that I'm going to dash towards and up. It's actually down. Or whatever. One, two, three, four, five. There's a magic, magical one, item chest. With so this. when you when you enter, let's 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 pause. When yeah. you enter, this is a pedestal here. And as you come down the stairs, it suddenly lights up with blue light like a force ghost from Star Wars and is like speaking to you in Elven. You speak Elven? I am running past. <laughs> Havidan, Tudash Dunamir. Two, and then it like gestures towards three, this doorway and yeah. you just go running through. Five. And it like, it, it stops <laughs> mid animation and then powers down as you keep going through. Cool. So I'm here. Elvis, this is how you turn the armor off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm assuming these are hallways. Uh, so let me that... describe what you see, my friend. Let me describe what you see. All right. 75 armor pieces stand up in the hallway. <clears throat> So, uh, you run through the doorway, and you just continue into this open area. There uh, is writing along all of the walls here that makes it kind of unusual. You know, it's got, it's got inscriptions following the whole wall in several rows until, you know, you've got, like, paragraphs of information wrapped around the room. This area over here appears to lead to uh, a chute. Uh, so there's like a metal door that you just would open and just like dump stuff in and then close. So it goes further down. Uh, yes. When you get this far, thus farly, uh, there is an animal lying on the floor that just gets up. It looks like a red dog with the exception of the flames coming out of its mouth and eyes. And it turns towards you and goes, Rrr? Okay. Um, is this a, a beast? Uh, why don't you go ahead and make an Arcana check? Well, the reason I'm asking is because I have a primeval awareness from yep. last. Yep. Arcana check? Yes. 19. This is a hellhound. It is a fiend. All right. I proceed to throw myself down the chute, Arthur Perkins. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to, like, assume a uh, an alpha male stance and shout down boy and infernal at it. Okay. Make an animal handling check. 
Okay. I proceed to get into the downward dog position and present myself to the hellhound. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Ten. <clears throat> All right. Uh, the hellhound looks at you with unusually intelligent eyes uh, and growls and flame escapes from its mouth. It still seems to be like shaking itself as it wakes up. It doesn't, like, bitch, please. It doesn't seem like it's going to stay. <laughs> Anything else you want to do, Daka? I think that's all I can do. Just, I just a dash. And... You dash super hard. Kelly, Daka has abandoned you as per plan <clears throat> B. As per the uh, the uh, traveler's agreement of... Uh, when in doubt, dogs. intend to uh, intentionally die. When in yeah. doubt, gather intelligence. Uh, I will um, uh, devour the last potion of healing that I have. My goodness. Uh, obviously... Uh, we're never going to get these again. So, what is it? 2d8? 2d6? What is it? I think it was 1d8. Mm, that, no, that's 2d4. 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 Uh, Plus 2, right? That's how math works. I think it is 2d4 plus 2. I'll take it. If you're only against a single dude, that's like... You could I mean, just pull up for a while. Well, it's not me that's going to reset us. Yeah, it's Finley. Yeah. Um, and then I will do a clerical who's a mistake and attack the dude. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I can at least gather some intelligence whether or not my clerical abilities will work on these things by hitting them as hard as I can. So I will do that. Hit it with a reef of receipts. Uh, now, let me ask you a question, Arthur. Inspiration. Mm -hmm. Carry over, yay or nay? What do you mean carry over? To our new, new life. Yes. It's yes? Based yes? Or at GM's discretion, I believe. Okay. Well, I will not use my inspiration then on simple things. Ooh, doggy. <laughs> and so everyone playing at home, uh, because I'm a half orc, I roll two d eight on my crit by default. So, what's what's that all about? That, a, that? Uh, that is my uh, good sir, a trait that I have um, called. It is called um, ferocity or something. something. Uh, it is called. Hey, what is it called? Uh, oh shit. I have the thing of menacing. You no, that's not it. Uh savage attacks. When you score a critical hit with a melee weapon attack, you can roll one of the extra damage dice one additional time and add it to the extra damage of the critical hit. So there you go. So instead of one D eight additional, I roll two D eight for a total of seventeen damage plus my radiant damage. Which is what a d6, if I remember mm -hmm. correctly. Mm -hmm. oh, it was a d4 plus d4. something. Doesn't matter. You, sure? you you slam into this thing with your warhammer and it shatters into pieces. Uh, the radiant damage hits this thing, and some of the pieces where the rust is, instead it just burns into little white wispy flakes that rise into the air and then disappear. Uh, the Shit. armor suit just hits the ground and stops working. It's pretty oh, bitching. No. But now, am I smart enough as a cleric to realize that uh, radiant damage was a one-hit kill on these things? Or was it also the damage this, from my weapon? Yeah, it was definitely the weapon damage that smashed this thing apart, not the radiant damage. Roger. Gotcha. Hey, Graham Iron Fury. Yeah, you, you might have heard like a brief oofing noise as uh, Finley went down earlier. Kind of like a oh, uh, not it was more like a Wilhelm scream, but uh, <laughs> yeah, way higher pitched, way higher pitched, and, and, and then like it, like no, Yoshi. Like, no, no, you know what it was? <laughs> it was like let me. <laughs> Actually, I have a question. Where is Gygax? He's on my shoulders. Okay, you, you've got your shoulder mounted Gygax. Distract yeah. him. He, he's literally like you know um hanging out like he's he's snarling doing the things that you know a professional trained ant does he's neither <laughs> professional nor trained i was imagining him hanging out with the old man 
Yeah, me too. Just like following the sheep around, try, trying to slowly salivate over them. But yeah, apparently Gygax is packed tightly into your backpack, kind of making remember, clicking noises remember, over your I told, shoulder. I told you I made yeah. like a little... Yeah, yeah. his head's just sticking out there, and occasionally yeah. he just makes little ant noises for you. Oh, yeah, the battle papoose. <laughs> battle papoose. Ingram, <laughs> when you're not uh, thinking about poor Gygax, what are you doing? I am contemplating uh, attempting to try to uh, disguise myself against this stupid thing. Might I suggest a shove? Yeah. This what is it? You're, you're a strengthy man, yeah? Are you strength? Uh, no, you're not. You're dex, right? Yeah. Okay, then don't worry about it. Don't worry about that. No. You just do you. See, how is it that I killed that one guy by myself? And all the attacks on all the crits Doc, on that other guy. I don't Doc think kill. you did. Daka put some serious damage yeah, on that he guy. He hit before. that thing like three times before yeah. he smacked it in the face. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's see. I don't know if this is going to work. Actually, no, it won't work either. Never mind. You've got Hunter's mark on this guy. I do. I also only have eight hit. Double points. daggers, man. Double swords, yeah, maybe. Fuck it, why not? Hey, climb that XP train if we can. Yeah, right. Yeah, milk it for all. <laughs> all right, yeah, I will uh, drop Zibo and uh, pull out the old uh, Gorkin mark here. Try and shank a bitch. So, oh, why did it not go off? Hell yeah. Nice. With Damn, the creeks are flowing tonight, boys. It is, what is it? It's 1d6, 2d6 for each one of those hits. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, so hell, man. <laughs> the, the hit before the crit actually wipes this guy out. Oh, use the second one on the second guy then. Can I? Uh, and that will deal 5 plus 6, 11 points of damage. Uh, if you want to spend your bonus action to flip the Hunter's Mark over. Yes, I will do. Yeah, so you get ready to do a double strike with your short swords. The first one hits this guy, and you're like, oh shit, Hunter's Mark! <laughs> As you reverse the cut, go the other direction and catch this oh, guy shit. that's stuck in the alcove. The first guy, you hit him, and it's just the the weird purple light in his eyes just kind of fades up into the ceiling as it comes out like a ghostly spirit, and the whole armor just <clears throat> downs onto the ground, spreads everywhere in a loud clank. Okay. That's good. To well, maybe they went coup de gras, Finley. Finley, maybe. why don't you go ahead and make a check to stay oh, alive? That guy's dead. Can I move the hunter's mark to the uh, hound really fast? Uh, oh, you can sad. on your turn because it's a bonus action. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you fail. Yeah. Uh, Finley, I have really bad news for you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they get this advantage is... on this, so it's two d twenty for each roll, and one hit will kill you. You're dead. Wow. Yay. <clears throat> All right. How many crits did we get in this combat? I think we got like seven. A no, statistically oh, wow. unusual Dude, number. Can I him? ask everyone but uh, Finley to take their headsets off real quick? I'll let you know in Roll20 chat when to put them back on. All right, look, here's the deal, buddy. Uh, I'm giving you an option here. You're the first one that reached this threshold because you're the first one that's acquired enough points. You can either suffer from continuing growing madness that will randomly uh, affect you throughout the campaign or you can suffer a random trauma that will lower your madness counter uh, as you continually die over and over again but its effects will only be able to be removed by like parties and chilling out so you can either randomly suffer really bad stuff, or you can constantly suffer a kind of bad thing. Uh, I'm gonna go with the slow creeping madness. Okay, you're not you're not gonna lower your madness level. You're gonna just randomly really bad shit will happen. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. that'll work. Uh <clears throat>
We're just waiting for everybody to get back here. Dave seems very interested in his coffee. <laughs> I think he's checking Twitter or something. Oh. Yeah. I thought you said you're going to use Roll20 to. I to, did. Uh, it's in Roll20. Yeah. Oh, I was scrolled up. Uh, all of you wake up wearing white clothing in the Fuck area. You can snap as far forward as the beginning of the session. I think on the cart should... leaving for uh, the the stone bridge. I think Cause... we did we decide we what we're gonna do where because we had just left Bondarock after getting all of our shit. Yes. Headed. Is that where we want to collectively? Yes. That yeah, is I'm okay with that. Far mm -hmm. forward as you can snap. Very well, well. Let me ask you a question, Arthur. Do, do, do we get experience points for the fights we've already done? Uh, you don't get experience points for redoing those fights because they're too easy for you. Even you, the zombie one? Even the zombie one. Yeah, that zombie you. fight with Horde Breaker is now incredibly easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> hey, think, uh, can, just be thankful <laughs> we both didn't take Horde Breaker. Mm -hmm. I am thankful, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. Uh, but in terms of experience you really would get almost nothing from that fight <laughs> by the way um, since you made a big deal out of it I would have had underpants on during the, uh, oh, the oh, okay <laughs> alright so this time around when you're approaching the guards gate the guards are not scrambling out to come meet you it's just the one guy uh, that stops you and is like gentlemen are you those Famous salt mine adventurers we've heard so much about. Yeah, that would be us, yes. Thank okay. you for your service. No problem. <clears throat> Thank you for yours. Thank you, son. Now, if, uh, if you'll wait here for a second, I believe, and he like whistles over and is like, <clears throat> it's customary to offer a sacrifice to Wellwind before going over this bridge. It's not necessary or mandatory. Just hope you take a minute of your time to listen to our brother. It's okay. I'm a cleric of Goose and Gus. We, we will be on our way. <laughs> so you say that. <laughs> this guy's like rushing up. He's like, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. You're like, you're a cleric of Goose and Gus. He's like, ah, they got him again. <laughs> Turns around. He's like, okay, keep me dealed in. Turns around and jogs back to the guard station. Dang, Goose and Gus and all the marketing they've done. <laughs> who would have thought that reaching uh having a god that reaches out to people on the battlefield whom there is a lot of these days would be a good idea by the way i turned to my party and was like i never would have thought that humans would have such problem with genitalia they are kind of gross i mean look humans i mean i mean yeah. <laughs> humans i mean <laughs> amazing so let me ask you a question arthur regarding mm -hmm. The funds and stuff like that. Yep. Would we have had healing so potions we, and stuff? I'm not gonna make you undo those until you do. Yeah, we'll just keep what you've got. Yep. Wow. Even chat okay. is on that. Yeah. You 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 have what you had at that time. Uh, full yeah, plate, okay. all those healing potions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh. Okay. <clears throat> you make your way across the stone bridge. You have a similar conversation with the shorter woman that you met with before. And unless I there's... Her, her, like, I ask her name specifically this time and what barrack she's she come from. <laughs> uh, she's just like... Uh, my, my rank is Corporal Latana mm -hmm. of the Southern Garrison. Can't, I wish can't to, get more south than this. I wish to take you up on your offer of knighthood. Really? How unusual. So I have a question for you, Arthur. He's a cleric, but we got some fucking magic shit too. I understand that, but let me ask you a question. How are they going to know that you have magic shit? I outwardly have a symbol. Holy of, symbol, which holy she symbol. made a point of talking about. Mm -hmm. Are tieflings kind of revered or like infamous as magical creatures? Not really. Uh, in this world, tieflings aren't 
aren't feared. Look, here's the thing about tieflings. Not exactly feared, but there's well, like <laughs> most of them no magic. It's kind of like a gen or like a race stereotype. In the here, here's what I want to point out about tieflings in Five E. The book has tieflings like they're an oppressed people. All the humans regard them with suspicion. They hide in the shadows and skulk. Pretty much every tiefling I've seen besides you has been like, look, boys, I'm super gay and flamboyant. I'm a tiefling <laughs> bard. I throw my boots up on the table and I color spray everybody. Uh, I, I've never seen a tiefling that's been like, I hide my identity from the people around me. I played a drow like that once. Yeah, it's, it's like drows. Boring. Drows are always incredibly <laughs> boring. There's only two types of drow, right? The Lothian drow and the drow that's like, I'm a chaotic good loner who's come to yeah. the surface to escape the oppression of my people. I've played two drow. I had a drow rogue in Pathfinder that was super whatever, and then the other one was a sorcerer who like set a dude on fire on a bar. Way more fun setting dudes on fire. Who would have thought? Yeah. You know. You know. you know what the book says about half orcs? They say that people should hide their silverware when a half orc walks into your tavern. So like a racist. Like an apple. Mm -hmm. Anyway. So the Corporal Latana says, All right. I'm going to give you a, a pass with my stamp on it. Take this to the capital. You'll be sworn in there. They'll find you a, a nice farmstead. You seem like you're kind of strong. It'll probably be somewhere along the war line, but uh, if you're lucky, maybe you'll be sent here. I have a... Well, I would prefer to go to the war line, but... And you're I in have... luck, because you can just go ahead and volunteer and get a bump up in rank. Well, I actually have a question for you regarding that. I have no interest in titles or land. I'm more a knowledge seeker than anything. I say, looking over at Daka. Uh, I like, just, give him a sagely nod. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yes, I'm more interested in acquiring words. Of course, a scholarly man of the cloth, I understand. I like look at her, like, kind of like, like I don't understand what she said. And I'm just like, yes. Uh, it would be unusual for you to not accept land. But there have been exceptions. Of course, you could, for some reason, take a knighthood in the occupied territories, in which case you would never ever see your land unless you fought your way there. If you're looking to get paid in knowledge, I believe that after serving your 40 days, you would have access to everything that a noble citizen would, including the Royal Academy of Magic. You'd be... I kind of I kind of like balk at her. I'm just like, 40 days? Yeah. 40 days. Of service every year. 40 days a year? Yeah. That's it? Oh, I thought you meant that was a lot. No, yeah. Only 40 days of service. <laughs> like, I like look at my party. I'm just like, ah, damn. <laughs> Most people think 40 days is too long, but given the way the war is going, I think maybe it's not enough. Apparently the wars are seasonal. Yes, just like just like every war up until n ever, the wars are seasonal. Back when I was doing wars, we used to fight all the time for every reason and every summer, spring or winter, autumn as well. That covers all of them. <laughs> uh, she looks at you strangely and says, it's, it's pretty difficult to fight in the cold. Some say in the dry as well. Have humans gotten weaker over the past couple of centuries? No, I think we've gotten stronger, really, as a people. More unified. Kind of physically lifting. Uh, let me ask, if it rains, do you stop the fight and take cover? Sometimes. Hmm. Very well, I'll take your symbol and I will take it to the person who I need to talk to. Thank you for your help. Bring it to lieutenant. the capital. Should be about... A, she's like, Lieutenant, I'm a corporal. Latana, Corporal Latana. Please oh, remember sorry. that. I'll get a small stipend for giving you a pass. Very well. Uh, so she's got, like, a leather work st stitched. It's like a bag that has words on it. And I guess you can't I, read it. No. <laughs> but Daka can. 
uh so <clears throat> it's kind of like a, a pass that reads you know the bearer of this has been identified as a magic user and wishes to become a citizen of the country etc etc and she's taken the area where there's like a, a large white box and she's pressed her stamp into it with some ink mm -hmm. uh it, it's kind of like a family house seal cool okay yeah as we're as we're riding through i'm just like Maybe I don't need to become an adventurer. So have we have we gone past this guard now? Are we like uh, you as you're finishing this conversation up, she gestures to the gate and is just like, "All right, they're good. Open it up." The gates open up to allow you to go through and follow the salt caravans in front of you, north. So as soon as we get out of your shot, I'm just like, you know, I'm like, I'm in, in the back, like polishing my new crossbow, and I'm gonna look over to uh, Kelly and be like, "Man, humans." What a bunch of pansies. We're fighting in tunnels, underground, all sorts of shit, and they complain about some fucking rain. I heard that they don't like getting dirty. Yeah, it's, it's very disconcerting when the only thing protecting the free world against a demon onslaught is a bunch of young children who hate fighting in the cold. Humans, am I right? What happens if their armor gets muddy? Do they stop? You know, when I was getting fitted for this armor that I'm wearing, he asked what style I would like. And I was confused at this. You mean there's a kind other than what keeps you alive? Fucking yes. humans, man. There are decorative pieces of armor, but usually those are... They're not for protection, they're for status. Mm hmm And then when they're not that, they're animated, right, boys? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. It's like, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. literally, yeah. Finley, when that happens, you like look around suspiciously. There are a ton <laughs> of people wearing armor around you, and all of a sudden you start sweating for no reason. Guys, uh maybe we should keep moving. Of I course. Mean, that's what the horses are for. Faster? I go so fast, I run over that tiefling, Arthur. <laughs> Is he coming actually, to jump out of the room? I actually want to stop and talk to him now, because like we already know what happens in the future. I want to see if he's worth his salt. I mean, sure. Let's go for it. Why not? All right. So uh, <laughs> you're riding through the town. And he <laughs> yeah, we will know the future. Jumps out oh. in front of you and is like, oh... I like the idea that we're all disembarking and like I'm like, you know, taking the the moving the cart over and it's like down this alleyway, Ryan. Very tidy. Oh, yeah. Yes, this <laughs> way to Ardvarks. Eyes. You're going to tell us the future. Uh, you're, I'm you're correct. <laughs> and he like throws his hood back and waves his hands out and he's like, I know the future. My name is Ardvark. I'm a fortune teller, an oracle of considerable power. I wave my hands and I say, you have a shop, your own shop. It's called Aardvarks. I just told you that. I also gestured towards it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Good try. Well, no, man. let's listen to this dude see if he's worth anything. Uh, so you go into his shop. He's behind you and he's like, don't mind the mess. Don't mind the mess. Everywhere in this shop, it is uh, extremely cramped. Like, it's uncomfortable for you, Kelly. It's still cramped for you, Finley. That's how close together. There's mm. bookshelves through the center of the place from the ceiling. There's, like, weird tentacles that are hanging from various locations. Some of them look like they come from octopuses and squids, but others appear to come from otherworldly creatures. Does Along the walls... Yeah, oh, it smells It smells like briny sea. There oh, I, are, I like the idea okay. that I walk in, I'm just like... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, if you are, have a sensitive nose, you would be retching in here. Uh, there are sealed glass jars with, like, cow fetuses and other, like, unshapely things along the walls. And he's like, come in, come in, let me get you a cup of tea before we sit down for a ritual or two is there anything you're looking for rare components reagents scrolls fortune telling card reading or the future i will draw a symbol on a piece of paper and go this what do you draw the symbol that's on our neck 
He goes, oh, a powerful and arcane symbol, the infinity. You want to know more about it? Um, it was a snake, right? Biting a tail? Yes. I would have drawn that. Yeah, 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 but it's in the shape of an infinity symbol. <clears throat> okay. Uh, well, specifically what this symbol with the snake and all that means. I'm sure we can learn a lot about it together. Now, will it be you and I? I don't follow what you're saying. Well, uh, <clears throat> don't worry about it. Just come with me to the back room. Let's get you some nice tea. I'm just going to need you to open your mind. You're going to cut off my head? No, no. The rest of you just wait out here. Make yourselves comfortable. You can pull out the bean chairs in the corner or there's small stools if you prefer. A cannonball into the beanbag chair. Uh, as you do, some dust comes out and... Poof, uh, but you make a, a satisfying pomp noise as you hit it. It's very comfortable, actually. Yes. Um, I'll start going through his books. <clears throat> uh, make a religion check real quick. All right. Religion. You, you share some things with this man uh, that you aren't aware of. You begin going through some of his books, flipping through... Uh, travelogue journals and like adventure books and occasionally some maps. There's a lot of arcane symbology and uh, strange goings on, horrifying sea monsters. There's something about this place that bothers you, but you just can't put your finger on it. Something that reminds you of your home. Agram, hey, what about you? Um, You're just like, ah, it's a weird place. Ah, yeah. I sit down and I pull out a beer. I wish. Plus some <laughs> fine dwarven spirits. Um, does he have any... Uh, so he's just got rows and rows of books, yeah? Yes, and horrifying creatures. and uh, yeah. There's a back room that he's leading. Okay. Is there anything in uh, dwarven runes? Anything I might recognize? There are several books in here that are in dwarven. I would like to know what they say. Very well. Uh, can you make an intelligence check real quick? Intelligence save. Can you feel I can. the love tonight? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. We'll crit that bitch. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're at home and you're just listening in, that was a critical success on that. You pick all the right books to understand what's going on here. <laughs> uh, you pull them down and... You feel yourself being drawn into the world of the books. And the authors who wrote these books are fucking crazy. All of these dudes are like, I love humans. Humans are great. Walking in the sunlight is awesome. Fuck the darkness. Uh, and, and then they start talking weird stuff. They're like, I feel very drawn to the sea. I'm very close to the sea. Beer is terrible. I prefer wine. I just uh, close the book. I'm just it's like, clear no, to you that no. all of these dwarven Arthurs have been inflicted with a terrible madness, a horrifying, creeping darkness in their minds. Just, Is that like I, the Cthulhu madness that makes people walk out into the ocean and just fucking um, die? Yeah, it's uh, exactly like that madness. Dude, I just, I just pulled up the book to Daka. Oh, now they're crazy one. <laughs> uh, so Kelly, he leads you into the back room. And then, like, pulls a warm cup of tea out for you and then begins taking some powders from three nearby tins and mixing them together on the table and then, like, putting them in your tea and suddenly it turns blue and has a little boiling effect going on. And he's like, all right, look, this is just to help you along. I'm going to need you to drink this tea and then clear your mind. Total trust with me. And then we'll see into your future. Can I sort of make myself hidden in the clutter and keep an eye on what's going on in the back? So there, room? yeah, there's like a bead curtain cutting it off. Do you want to make a perception check to like look in on what's going down? Yeah, I can. I can never find perception. There it is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the the beads keep moving in a gentle breeze, and so all you hear is like the susurrus of hey, beads yeah. that sound kind of like the ocean. It's real gentle. Mm. Uh, so yeah, Gygax pokes his head out of the bag and like looks at that tea and goes, ah, ah. "Hush, it's my tea." Ah. Um, 
how willing are you to allow me to have a spell prepared that will remove poison? Uh, which spell is it? It's uh, a spell in the cleric repertoire yep. called... Um, remove poison. Uh, it is called uh, detect poison and disease. I don't know that that removes poison. Oh, well, you know, it'll allow me to see whether it's poisonous. I mean, he definitely just took some pretty rad powders, dropped them in the drink, and then it started boiling and turning blue. It's definitely poisoned, 100%. I mean, whiskey's poisoned, it's got some. Too. It's got some shit in there. He definitely drugged the fuck out of this tea yeah, and is not I, hiding it. Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> well, at this point, nothing bad has happened to me at all with his resets, so I sort of look at him and I just go, let me just make something abundantly clear here old man uh, not that old but okay you kill me here with this whoa blue whoa kill you have you seen stop your talking. friends outside stop talking you kill me with this blue thing here right it's it's medicinally safe okay it's I don't, certified I don't, I don't i've never seen it before so here's the story if this kills me you will regret it it's and not gonna. Just, and then I knock it back in this life or the next. Oh wait. Yeah. All right, make a Constitution save. If I pass it, does nothing happen? <laughs> the guy's like, "Well, I guess you could drink more." <laughs> Thirteen. It's exactly what you needed. Uh, you get a warm feeling that comes over you. It you can feel the tea going into your stomach and then spreading out into your blood. Uh, you kind of feel like, whoa, man, everything is super chill. But then you're like, no, actually, I love causing war. Uh, yeah, this tea was supposed to affect your mind somehow and make you calmer. It didn't work at all. Mm -hmm. Could anything really calm you down? Who knows? So it's like, all right, excellent. You've drunk the tea. You weren't supposed to drink all of it that fast, but you're a big guy. I don't know if I got the dosage correct. It's fine. I just need you to open your mind and trust me. Are you ready? We're going to open the infinite cosmos between us and peer into your future. I love the idea that right now in Kelly's mind, he's thinking about all the things in the room that he can use to kill this man. <laughs> you know? There's like, plenty of things. Ah, there, there, there is, a, there is a, a jar with a fetus in it. I could bludgeon him to death with that. Hmm. You know, that, that's the sort of thing that he's thinking about because his eyes are sort of wired and he's just like, he's not angry. He's just aware of all the possibilities. Yeah. All right. So opening the mind's eye. Sure. What's next? <clears throat> uh, he reaches out and like puts his hands on the table before him. As he does the white tablecloth suddenly turns into a six pointed uh, star like whoosh. and he's like whoa look at that super cool magic huh you ready put your hands over mine we're going to share consciousnesses uh, don't worry it's okay. all part of the process I know you might be feeling nervous but the tea should be helping you with this all right, I, Arthur, I front load all of the most brutal fights I've had as a warrior. And then you touch this guy's hands? Yes. All right. You hear his voice in your mind. He's like, whoa, look, we're connected now. Super cool, right? You're going to have to talk out loud, though. Only I can talk to your mind. Is he a South Park character? Like, what's going on here? <laughs> anyway, yeah. Okay. All right. Again, telepathically. Everything else he says from here on out is going to be telepathic. All right. Tell me what troubles you. What do you want to know about in the future? I'm starting to see the cloud that's between us. I'm going to pull things out of the mist. What troubles me? Hmm. You seem like a troubled man. A dark cloud hangs over your shadow. <clears throat> I'm, I'm worried about why I can't die. I understand. I understand. You're just too strong of a warrior to be allowed to die. No, I, 
I die a lot, but I don't die. All right, I don't really understand, so I'm gonna take a deep well, breath. Look into my mind, you can just see everything. Yep, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna look in there. I feel okay. like maybe you're resisting me a little bit, but that's okay. I'm gonna concentrate on this snake that you've drawn, and we're just gonna go in. All right, make a wisdom saving throw. I'm good at those two. So. You feel something at the edge of your mind, like yeah. a kind of. If your mind was a fortress. It's like a weird wet tentacle is working its way at the side of the wall and trying to like get over the wall and pull the release for the front front gate. There's little Kelly <laughs> with a double sided axe cutting off this tentacle. All ah! right, the dude's hands jerk in real life away from you and out loud he says, whoa, whoa, did the T not work? Come on, we're trying to be mysterious here. You have to open your mind. I did, I saw the tentacle. I sure am the tentacle. The tentacle is me. The tentacle is also the, the power of infinite knowledge and secrets. I like crack my neck. It's like super loud. I'm like fine. Again. Okay. All right. Maybe you'd like some more tea? No. Okay. I'm putting my hands back on the table. As he does, whoosh, the six-pointed star reappears. And he's like, pretty cool, huh? Yeah. It's magic. I put your hands on top of mine. Okay. All right. I'm about to delve in, get some secrets. Make a wisdom saving throw again. Can I choose to fail it? Uh, yes, you can. I see the tentacle coming up the side of the cl uh, side of the castle, and while my fingers are itching, I let it pass. All right. It opens the front gate. <laughs> And then, like, a whole mass of wriggling tentacles, dozens of them, begin to invade into your mind. You jerk back into reality, and you're like, whoa, shit, that was weird as fuck. And he's like, all right, I can see your deaths, and I share your pain. You want to know you... more about this snake? Yes. There's not a lot that I can tell you about the future here, but one thing remains clear through the dozens of paths that I see. One secret that evades you that is critical to your knowledge. You are not what you appear to be. You are not from this time. You're not from this place. And that skin you wear is not who you are. I know, whoa, like deep knowledge, right? Your mind is not like other orcs or other humans. You're old, like deep planar creature old. Then in real life, he jerks his hands away. And he's like, whoa, pretty cool, right? Continue where you left off. Ah, uh, that's as far as I can go. It's five gold. No, you continue. I put the my entire bag on the table, Arthur, and I just say, continue. And he pulls out five gold, and he's like, listen, man, let me tell you something. I've done I a lot of... I both hands on the table, and I'm like, continue. Listen, customer, let's calm down here. I pick him up by the, by the scruff of his neck, and I slam him against the wall, and I say, you Are, will continue. All of you can hear this now, that Kelly is, like, slamming this guy through the bead curtain. Like you can you can see the guy's hand like hit the bead curtain. Now you see like he's got he's got this dude like two feet up off the ground choking him. You give me answers, you old man, right now. I'm not that old. Please let me go. Let me go. This is assault, okay? This is super weird. Kelly, can we put him down? No. Guy Gax is like, nah. Without uh, <laughs> without even like looking up from the book I'm reading, I just like. Told you it only take five minutes. Look, customer. He knows things. I, here's what I have to tell you, man. Like, I've done a lot of these readings, okay? There's, there's different stuff for everybody, all right? Knowledge of the deep secrets comes at a great cost. But more importantly, I've never seen anybody with ley lines like you, man. They go, like, all sorts of directions. There's many of them. There's not one, okay? Speak but yours stretches way back. Like, you're forward, many forwards, 
one long back. Okay? All right? That's that's worth five gold, right? That's more tell than you knew more, when you I'll came in you, here. I will pay you more. Tell me I, more. I don't have anything else to tell you more. You're kind of scaring me, and I have tentacles that hang from the ceiling of my shop, so it's pretty difficult to rile me up, brother. <clears throat> How... Is it like a power thing? Like, why can't you do more? Yeah, like, I haven't sacrificed enough. Come on, like, uh, you, this guy's pretty strong, right? He's literally lifting me up off the ground. I'm, uh, I'm not half, that strong in magic, all right? He is a half orc, not half paint, half orc. I'm going to take out the manacles I have in my bag, Otho. <laughs> okay. Oh, He's just like, no, no, please, no, no. <laughs> If it is true that your magic only works once a day, then you will come with us until you give once me a day. all No, it's not that it works once a day. I just can't tell you anything more. All right, do me. Do me. Do me. Oh, okay. okay. No, he will finish with me first. Arthur. There's nothing else to talk. <laughs> he's just like, he holds his hands up to his head and he's like, this is happening. This is even crazier than my dreams. The whispers of nightmares. Oh, it's coming back to me. It's all coming Fine. back to me. I didn't think it would end I, I, here. I, I, I like slap him, like, you know, not <laughs> enough to hurt him, but to just like, you know, make sure that he understands that he's in a situation now. And it's like, then you will give me answers as to who can tell me more. Okay. I, I might be able to do that. I like drop him. <laughs> <laughs> he lands in his beanbag chair. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to consult the dark powers. Okay, this is Fine. gonna be like another. He like looks over your gold pouch, another twenty gold to see farther into your future for more I, I, answers. I just, I just upend the bag onto him, and I'm just like, just give me the fucking knowledge. Already. How much money are you dropping on this guy? Um, <laughs> I don't know, not enough to pelvis. <laughs> like a like, I guess like a hundred gold. I guess. All right, something. yeah. You make it rain on this dude, and he's just like, okay, all right. And your answers better be good because, like you've seen, many paths. Yes? Mm hmm, mm hmm. You might be rich in this one, but you will be dead in another. So, like, he turns to look at you and he's like, What? Answers. I'm gonna need something else. More than a hundred gold. What do you want? Secrets. You just probed my mind. The dark powers demand ancient or special knowledge. Things that have been hidden or things that should not be known. Do you or any members of your party have such arcane knowledge? I mean, I know knowledge of the previous timelines. Right, but he already read all of your memories. Well, he claims to have done so. I'll kind of like... Don't say I didn't... There's, there's some fucked up shit. So he like perks up. He's like, oh, you have something. If you look into my mind, you'll find it. Don't and say I didn't warn you, though. Come, sit, sit. Would you like some tea? Sure. All right. So he gets another glass out, pours some tea, and then like looks over you and he's like, All right, tiefling, huh? All right, I know this mix. And then he like takes powders from the three tins, pours it in. This time the tea's like a deep green and it doesn't boil. And he's like, Okay, I'm going to need you to drink that and then open your mind. All right. I All right. Make a constitution it. save. Okay. Yeah. You feel that warmth come into your belly, start to spread through your veins, try to calm you down, but you're just is like, this, nope, I'm good. Is this a familiar blend to me? No, but this is definitely some sort of like narcotic drug. Yeah. Uh, he's like, okay, good, good. All right. I'm putting my hands down on the table. Whoosh. The blue six-pointed star appears. I'm going to need you to put your hands over mine and open your mind. I put my hands over his and open my mind and like purple wisps start going from my hands to his. 
He's like, whoa, that's pretty cool. But he says it in your mind telepathically. I say a lot of, I know. All right. Okay. Can you tell me what hidden knowledge I'm looking for in your mind? Guide me. Guide me down this path. And then we cut to your, like, memory palace, which is, like, a small stone temple that your family has. And you Mm -hmm. can, like, see outside the wooden door that marks the place. There's, like, a tentacle trying to reach in through the mail slot and, like, unlock the door. Open the door. Let me in. So I'll open it. Yep. You are immediately buried as a mass of tentacles just wash over you. They're slimy and cold and they smell of the deep ocean. Mm -hmm. Snap back to reality and he's like, guide me. Where are we looking in your mind? Probably like the center chamber at my father's funeral. The last day I was at the temple. Like, probably the last word. So he's of- seeing Stalvin Black come in for your father's funeral and demand that ancient artifact of your families. Yeah. And this guy's going, Whoa, I recognize that object, but this scene, my friend, what's your name? Daka. This never happened. This memory is false. I can see it. Someone has planted this memory within you. Because Stalvin Black does not have this item. I know who does. Do you know what it's called? I do not. But I do. Oh, tell me the name of the item. And I will pass it along to my patron. Let's make a deal. First, you agree to give my friend Kelly whatever he wants. I can't give him whatever he wants. I can only give him what the great dark Lord gives. Well, then you will give him everything that you know. Agree. Does the word Sarkor mean anything to you? He's like, yeah. Are you saying this out loud? Because I had to talk out loud. He, right? Yes, he has to talk out loud, but this guy's speaking telepathically in his mind. Yeah. So uh, it, did it have like a special title or was it just a piece? Sarkor is a name for a magic item that's like an artifact level item that can only be unlocked by having a similar personality or philosophy as the person who created it. Mm -hmm. so they're like extra powerful but only someone who is like the person who created it is able to use them uh so for the rest of you uh (laughs) actually for all of you (laughs) there's like this weird buzzing noise that begins to enter your minds and finley it's like twice as strong for you you're like oh shit what is that nice uh the ground begins to shake and the, there's rain that comes down inside the store. So you can like look outside and there's nothing going on. Completely sunny weather. There's rain inside the store as like thick, heavy droplets begin hitting it. The tablecloth begins rising up and passes through your hands and begins like ghostly hanging in the air as weird noises begin uh, coming out. The tablecloth flips and then turns to face Daka, and the cloth blinks as it turns into a great eye. Daka. Do I see this? Yes, yes, you do. It's fucking horrifying. (laughs) I am the great eye whom you should remain hidden from. You are an old and ancient creature, older even than I. You wish to know where you must go for knowledge. If you do not wish to make pacts with me, then head, head to the capital. There, seek out the conclave 
a secret gathering of my agents. Warlocks of great secrets and power. They know more about where you come from, and more importantly, where you are going. And the eye blinks again, and turns back into a tablecloth, and then settles down, but this time the tablecloth lands over the two of your hands. The rain stops, but everything smells like dark, oily garbage. Aardvark is like, holy shit, that was awesome, guys. Never had such a strong experience. Look, I've been, I've been pacted with the great eye for like a decade or so, but I feel like we really drew him out here today with like some incredibly dark stuff. Do you feel it? Do you feel it all around you? The infinite knowledge of the cosmos. I'm no smarter than when I came in. Okay. All right. How about you, Daka? Do you, do you feel dark knowledge? Anybody? No? I feel like confused. Okay. All right. Uh, well, I have your money. Uh, I can get you all towels and another cup of tea if you'd like. Now you hold up your end of the bargain. I turn to Kelly. You promised me answers. I, ah, ah. The great eye told you where you could go for knowledge. Your path will lead you to the capital, to the conclave. Even I am not powerful enough. He told me. Are okay. We on the same path. You are probably all on the same path. Look, I, I'm kind of like a local warlock. You know, I'm, I, I don't really travel. I'm a small town well, warlock. You know. <laughs> Pack a bag. Make a persuasion check at advantage because you dropped a hundred gold on his ass. <laughs> okay. Has a 14, do you? All right. <clears throat> so he's just like, you know what? For a hundred gold, I can, I can spend two weeks traveling with you. Okay. All right. I feel like we have a strong partnership. Like you, you, you guys and me, we're, we're a party now. We're a team. All right. Don't go so far to say that. I would say I would, I would go that far. I would go that far. I would say we've been bonded by an experience of the supernatural, the kind of dark mysticism you read about in stories when you're a kid. And you want to feel better because everyone calls you weird because you got horns. Okay? This is the kind of stuff I grew up wishing would happen to me. And now we're there, guys. We've achieved it. My dream. It's pretty cool stuff. You have shitty dreams. You well, have shitty dreams, maybe. I don't know. Look. You have five days to think of how you're going to get us into that conclave. All right. Yeah. I think... I think they might let us in. Who was the eye, by the way? That, that, that is the great old one. The great eye whom you should remain hidden from. That's its name. You foolishly didn't remain hidden from him. And now... Is he in any, is he in any way related to the, the Wanderer? The Wanderer Jital. The god of travel and trickery? No, Are you asking was... about the unnamed mask? Yeah, the unnamed mask. Yeah, when you say the unnamed mask, he's like, whoa, of course. That's what the family temple of yours was. Your your family were warlocks? That's awesome. I knew that we, we had something. I could feel the energy between us was flowing very freely. Whatever was in that tea made me not vomit this time every time I remember something from my past. Cool, cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's probably like the guided process between us. Sure. As I, you know, awake your mind using my dark power. All right, look, guys, I need to like pack up some travel necessities. Going to need at least one fetus, uh, probably some components, 
probably need to dry out the shop before we go. Could you like give me light, please. two hours? We'll get on the road. Two we'll hours. Go one. Fine. Okay, one hour. All right. What about one hour twice? No. Okay. All right. Two hours then. We're agreed. You, you, you could do one hour twice as long as it's consecutive. He's like, yes, exactly. Consecutive to one hours. If one you, one hour for essentials, we can pick up anything else we need along the way. Okay. You've got, right. Yes, one hour or you're traveling us with us in manacles. Your choice. All right. That sounds illegal. So... What are you going to do? Kill me? Uh, probably going to call for help. And I'll tell you what. We'll give you 60 minutes. What about 120? This yeah. conversation continues right up until the end credits roll. Wherein <laughs> you all get 66 experience points. What? Yeah, Damn. 66 experience. You all seem so <laughs> fucking enthusiastic. We killed like two dudes. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> In plate armor. <laughs> uh, guys, some weird shit happened today. Mm -hmm. Also, Finley is slowly going insane by choice. Yay. Is that <laughs> what the, the hands are, the, the ears off thing was? Yeah. Okay. Cool. We get our first death penalty. How many times have you died, Brian? Uh, like being a little sick of a reset. I believe that was the second time. He's directly died twice. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, because directly died, you take more. It could happen to you. It could, but he's a fighter and a cleric. I've got 40 hit points. So it's probably going to happen to one of you guys. Can you... Uh, Copy my Kelly post revive sheet, please. Okay. So and delete the and delete the Kelly sheet. Actually, no. Keep that. Keep the Kelly sheet. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. I'll probably die the most because I've got sixteen HP. Strangely, though, I think you've not died. Well, all right. Egram actually uh, has your beat. Everyone's died once. Yeah, Daka and I have not directly died. I, I, I did. Oh, did. Daka definitely directly died. I haven't but directly died. Daka got super stabbed. You got, um, Daka died twice because he got iced the first time. Yep. Yeah. But... And then he got stabbed. Yep. And then you've died once, uh, uh Agrim. Because, um, I got iced by the wizard, but. Yes, you did. And that's the first time you died. Yeah. And then Kelly got gang banged the first time, so. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen. Uh, apparently chat is saying things about me and magicians, <laughs> yeah. but you know, I think that when you're, you have the ability to like turn people into frogs, you don't necessarily think the way other people think, right? You don't turn into Chris Angel though. It's a bit different when it's, oh, you know, fucking with people and actually able to do. I want to point out that Gleemo is, uh, an entertainer more than a wizard. This guy is actually insane, however. And is also a warlock. Uh, yes, he's, a, he's insane because he's a warlock of the madness patron. Mm. That would do it. Yeah, yeah, it would. Speaking of people slowly falling into the madness, let's do an outro from Finley. Uh, I'm slowly going insane. Yep. Nothing else? That's... That's your whole uh, deal? Yeah, well, like, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, no, uh, I'm Sputnik. You can catch me here on Wednesdays. Uh, and on Twitter and other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Sputnik underscore 71. That's me. My goodness. How interesting. Dave, let's hear more about you. Uh, hey, everyone. Um, probably going to start streaming again fairly soon uh we've got a game coming up um with sid alpha uh brian atomic and um james corp uh for star trek adventures uh we don't know when that'll start but it'll be a sunday 5 p.m psd game it'll probably start sometime in january next year with everyone's done their characters for brian um he'll he'll have to do his by himself 
But the system looks pretty good. I'm excited for it. Um, Damn it, Brian. Yeah, I screwed the pooch on that one. Mm. But uh, other than that, yeah. Um, I think this is our last game before New Year's, right? I think so. Yeah. Because um, I think next week everyone says that they're busy. Oh, yeah. Um, and then, then the third is like January. So, yeah. Well, uh, if we don't see you before then, um, have a happy Christmas and a safe New Year's Eve. And remember to throw your Twitch Prime over at AP Gaming. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Twitch Prime, let's talk to Drummer Boy. Yeah, throw your Twitch Prime at AP Gaming Real. I've been harping on that. I was the people, the person to say it, the last words on the last episode and the first words of this one. So freaking do it, okay? Um, yeah, I'm Drummer Boy. I make music. Put out a new Court of Swords song today on uh, the Roleplay Bandcamp. Uh, you can listen to my stuff on Spotify if you want. If you want to, I have one Christmas song, the Christmas with Cox uh, song from last year. That's the the happiest song I've ever written. I think. I think it's legitimately the happiest song I've ever written. Uh, yeah, that's me. Okay. Okay. Well, there's only one person left. Who could it be? It's Agram. The man who eats so much goddamn damage. Look, man, I gotta do what I can. I'll face tank if I have to. I, yeah, like I to mean, say, yes. I asked. I asked a friend of mine. I was like, other than tonight, I've only ever had one other session where I've rolled more criticals in such a short. And that was a Warhammer game, so who doesn't talk about that? You roll a lot more, but most criticals rolled tonight of like my entire tabletop thing. So that's that's always good. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, Atomic Spoon on Twitch, the Atomic Spoon on Twitter. Um, hopefully, Atlas comes out on Friday, and uh, we can do a little little bit of streaming of that. I know. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll be around for that. We have some other people. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, I'll be, again, the Star Trek game, and then uh, not really doing anything else until after New Year's, because fucking holidays, man. I just want to be antisocial in peace, damn it. No. That sounds about right. Yeah. I'm Arthur Perkins. This has been AP Gaming Real. We'll see you in like two weeks, maybe a little more. Mm. The new year. And we'll figure out how things will be different this time around now that we have Ardvark the Warlock joining us uh, as a somewhat reluctant, very nervous, probably insane companion on the wagon. If he stabs me in the back, I'm going to be so mad. <laughs> I will kick him off the back of this wagon so fast. <laughs> Uh, I don't know that you could die from one hit in the back anymore. I don't think so. I got 16 HP, man. I mean, maybe Finley might be we the get, only one who could do it. Maybe that well, sneak attack. I got. I get the double yeah. thing too. But uh, we're, you're gonna have to take a level in barbarian just for some hit points, dude. Yeah, no, no, he'll take a level in barbarian and then roll a one. It's not gonna help us. <laughs> I think this, is, this is the turning point of uh, Daka going Warlock, though. <laughs> oh, boy. Man, Warlock Ranger. That is a combination I did not think I'd ever hear of, but that, that could be pretty cool. It's suboptimal, but damn, it's cool. I don't know if it's <laughs> suboptimal. It's going to be super nature-based, though. You're like, yeah, I just like reach into nature, and then I pull out some weird shit, and now my bow has wings, uh, and I can fly, I guess? I think yeah. I'm the one that gets all the weird... Like, also, I can fire things. beams from my eyes. Okay. I <laughs> Eldritch Blast and <laughs> Arrow at the same turn, and then Horde Breaker, and then... Oh, don't, for, don't forget, if you're going to be a warlock, Hex. Yeah. Hex. yeah you're like, Hex, you all right, Hex. he's got Hex and Hunter's Mark on him, so I deal like 2d10 plus 50 billion damage. <laughs> I That's think it. I'm just going to have to turn into like the guy that intentionally sucks damage because there's no way I'm keeping up with you guys and your damage now. Are you like, kidding? Um, You're literally like Mr. Damage Spike. You... You're like, all right, I get two attacks and then I get another two attacks. Well, he gets like the, a... the two attacks like one turn out of combat, right? I mean, yeah. four attacks in one turn is a lot of attacks. Uh, well, I mean, level five warrior is like I'll be swinging twice every attack, and then I get to attacking. Sure, no, three they... turns every attack. 
and then I get to attack again. So I'm doing like six swings a turn sort yeah. of things. So I guess it catches up. Eventually. I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about alpha strike damage, okay? For like the first mm -hmm. round or two, you're going to be good. We got that alpha yeah. damage. Yeah. I got like a sudden damage spike this time just because I got like AOE attacks on double attacks, but... All right. Yeah. It'll even out. Look, guys, we'll be back at some point. Stick around for us. I mean, if you're... If you're watching live, obviously don't stick around for us. But if you're on YouTube, stick around. There'll be another video at some point. Have a good yeah, night. Bye-bye.